is up guys welcome back to my channel I'm Elena and today we're going to be talking about these fall and winter collection candles so these are all the cement candles and I'm going to take you guys from start to finish on how I made these candles anyway if you guys are interested in seeing how we do this then just keep watching all right let's get started so I'm just laying everything out here as you can see I've got my protection I wear a mask when I do this I always make sure that I have everything ready and prepared before I get started just makes it easier make sure I've got my white paper down and I do this outside just because I don't want to be inside and this powder go everywhere and you do not want to breathe it but anyway we're gonna go ahead and start by adding our water first and then I'll add the uh, concrete mix. So normally I add uh, one part water to four parts of concrete. And you're gonna see why here in a minute, why I decide to always put paper down. It just makes life so much easier. All right, slowly pour this in to the water and you wanna make sure that this doesn't happen. Anyway, just go ahead and stir this. You're gonna mix it and just continue to keep pouring your um, concrete into your water until you get that perfect consistency and just like most people say in other videos and in my past videos you kind of want it to be like a pancake consistency so let's go ahead and get this ready to pour in our vessel so I just make my candles a little different by just pouring the uh, the color the acrylic paint down the sides and I'll just kind of pour a little bit on the top so that way when it when I do pour the concrete it just falls down into the bottom and it pushes that color down towards the actual top of the candle and now I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this really kind of slow I don't want to create any air bubbles and then I'll just kind of I'll pour just enough into it to where I can tap that down and get some of those bubbles out now this batter did thicken up on me because when you're recording and you're trying to do everything, it sat for a minute, so, so it did thicken up quite a bit. And the key to making these, tap the heck out of the mold. You wanna get all those bubbles out. As you can see, look how many bubbles are coming up. So yeah, just tap the heck out of it. It may take you five minutes. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and let these sit for a few hours. I would say leave them in the mold for about two hours before you take them out of the mold. Here it is the next day. I forgot and left them in there overnight. And so anyway, that's fine. Totally does not make a difference. Uh, here is the lid that I made. It still has a little bit of the moisture in it, but it looks pretty good. And if you guys are interested in this mold, I will list it in the description below. I also did a video on this, making this, and talking about where I got this um, mold from. It works great. I love it. I'm going to buy a few more of these things. I'll list the company information in the description below. Now, here's the fun part. Uh, I dread this part because my hands and fingers get so sore when you have so many of these molds. You have to unmold each one of these and I believe right now I have about six molds and I make six at a time but the only thing I could figure out like the easiest way to get these things unmolded was just you know you get it up over that lip and you just kind of work it around I do at least halfway around and then I can pretty much you know get it from there but like I said if you guys know an easier way to get these things off and not have to kill your hands let me know in the comments below but once you get this thing out it's it's pretty simple from here you just kind of pop it right out I take this and I twist it and pull it right out and it's just neat seeing the design you've created so see the colors how they just they fall down I love that waterfall effect Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just unmold the rest of these that I have sitting over here on the side. So I can let them sit for about a day so that way they completely dry. You don't want any moisture in these. Um, and I'm going to sand them before I do that. So just basically sand the bottoms. 
So for instance, here you can see the bottom is pretty rough. So I just want to take that and smooth it out. So I'm going to use this sanding block that I found in my husband's toolbox. And I just take some sanding paper and I cut them down. I just buy the sheets and I'll cut them down into strips so they fit and just sand the bottom of it. Make sure that you do wear your mask and maybe protect your eyes as well because you're getting that fine powder that's going to be uh, coming off of this. Time to get these coated. So it's been about a day. I let these sit and they're all dry and you're just going to seal coat the inside of these. Here I'm using a Safe Coat Exterior Polyuracil Clear Satin Paint. I guess you would consider it like a, a sealant. Um, this is specifically for concrete and I have tested this and I've also used the other uh, seal coat um, in my other videos and that works just fine. I've tested that one as well. Um, totally your preference, but I prefer this because it's eco-friendly and it's not toxic. But anyway, I'll list the information where you can get this below. I did purchase a tester to try out and then ended up getting the pint. So I will warn you, it's a little bit pricey, but it's definitely worth it. Now you're going to go ahead and just paint the inside of this. You're going to get the walls all down on the bottom. Put a nice good coat on this. You're going to let your first coat dry. And then after that, you come back in and I always do a second coat. If you feel like you need another coat, go for it. Time for some more fun stuff. Here I'm using the wooden wicks, which I absolutely love, and they fit perfect for these rustic candles. Now I'm just going to lay everything out. So I've got the, the wick stickers, the wicks, and the clips all laid out. So now just put everything together, get that ready. Here you'll see I'm just preparing everything, getting it all ready, getting it laid out so I can go ahead and stick these directly in the center the bottom of these vessels and just you know when you're placing your wick always just make sure that you are you know placing it directly in the center of the bottom of the vessel okay here I've got all of my uh, oils weighed out and went ahead and poured in my fragrance and I always use 10% fragrance load in uh, my recipe. I just feel that it works the best with uh, my soy wax. So we're going to let this sit to uh, the perfect temperature and then we're going to pour those into our vessels. Make sure you pour it slow into your candle vessel and I just pour it right over that wick and just soak that wick. That way it doesn't form, you know, you may get, it may cause air bubbles, anything can happen. So I just pour it directly over the wick and make sure I saturate it and just pour slowly. But as you can see, there's a lot of bubbles, but hopefully they'll work themselves out. And if not, I'll show you a little technique. If you keep watching, I'll show you a technique on how you can fix sinkholes, bubbles, uh, just tops that you're not happy with. Now let them sit for, golly, I would say a couple hours. Even if you can, let them sit overnight. Now it's time to cut those wicks down. I normally cut them, uh, leave about a quarter inch of a wick, um, you know, on my candle. So we're gonna cut them down. I'm using these uh, wick trimmers. These things work great. At first I didn't think it was gonna cut the wood, but it actually works pretty darn good. All right, you remember what I said about those uneven tops, the bubbles? Well, this will take care of that. Just get out a heat gun and heat those tops up just to where, you know, you're, you're liquefying that top part and let them cool and see how they look once they've cooled. If you're not happy with it, go for it again. Just take it and smooth out those tops. Man, these candles smell so good. Now we're gonna add our finishing touch and what we're doing here is cutting out our tops for the candle. So this kind of just protects it from dust. So I would consider this the label and dust cover. Um, this one did end up going off a little bit so I had to redo it, but yeah, this is what they look like and they just kind of protect the top 
from you know dust and fingerprints anything like that so I just create the little lip so you can pull them off sometimes they do absorb the oil that's in the, the candle but that's not a problem and if your customer decides they want one of the lids the custom lid you can always add the lid to it so I just leave these on and then add the lid right on top but they turn out beautiful I can't wait to start selling these and don't forget to add those warning labels to the bottom I hope you guys enjoyed it and that is it That's it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already because I will be posting up more videos very similar to this. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.